Hi and welcome. Welcome to Arts and Wellness Cafe. I'm Amanda, your host. Welcome to my podcast listeners. Um, thank you for joining me. Well, cre- oh, I'm getting them mixed up, aren't I? Arts and Wellness Cafe. I was just recently listening to a episode of my podcast for, um, it came out on Monday and in that episode the word that um the the words that i was speaking to was friendly the word friendly if you like my earrings <laughs> they're um they're uh, clip-on i don't normally wear clip-on i've got pierced ears but my the metal or the jewelry that gold or silver has been uh, reacting with my skin um, I think you go through you go through periods of your life where um, there are changes <laughs> and what was once before can no longer be so anyway um, yeah I thought I would um, brighten myself wear something bright and cheerful and um, sorry I'm just Nosy there, the uh, farmer next door. Um, he's an organic farmer, he's just doing some work. Anyway, yeah, back to these earrings. So they're a bit kind of. <laughs> Even Cole's looking, he's sitting down there. Um, he was the dog that I said to myself, Oh, I wish I had a dog that's at my feet. And he's doing that, he does that. And so be careful what you wish for, and maybe wish for something that you know, is um, going to put pounds in the bank or dollars in the bank or whatever it is. Um, but um, even these are feeling a bit kind of... Anyway, so the topic for today, the word for today is an extension of the word on Monday's Creating in Faith, and that is friendly. So if, when you think about that in a in a creative way um what what does that or when you apply it to your creativity what does that what does that do for you now i found that um dependent no so thinking about the art community sometimes um it can be very different to how you would imagine so it was very different from how i imagined and i found that there were pockets of cliques that you know well these people didn't talk to those people or those people didn't associate with these people and um, I was just surprised I was just like but we all get to be creative <laughs> oh my gosh we all get to be creative isn't that fantastic and uh, but no you know there's still that kind of difference and I found it here as well um, you know there are certain groups and it's just really interesting to observe and that's what I do because it's just like I really don't have time for that because I left corporate environment to then you know in the place where I'm so passionate the thing that the thing that I'm so passionate about I don't have time to engage with this the idea of cliques or the idea of these people feel these particular way over so it's just about creating to me creating for me and you know what despite being in the tropics i've got my cardi here so i'm just going to drape it i was going to get my shawl but i think i forgot it just drape it over my shoulders and that feels so much it feels so much better yes so how have you been eh how have you been i'm talking to you how have you been you really do have to think about it. Now I'm saying you do have, not that, yeah, you have to think about it, but you do. <laughs> you have to think about how you're feeling. And um, if you're not going to take the time to really kind of contemplate that, then I'm going to give you the space here. So think about how you feel and think about, you know, are you, are you a kind of friendly person? Would you say that? And are you friends with yourself? Mm. See, that's something that I've just really kind of 
thought about are you friends with yourself and do you encourage yourself so you know there are a lot of people around who are driven and we know those people and we've seen examples of the work the kind of work that they do but if you don't like yourself um what then so you have to find ways to be kind to yourself to love upon yourself to um be the friend that you've always wanted for yourself um and in doing that you shine your light and then you kind of emit this kind of presence and people will gravitate towards you um or people will um people will get where you're coming from or people will you got two two things people will either get where you're coming from or people will hear will see your work and you will speak to them through your work so there's that but um i mean i i always say with these words you know think about how it um how how it impacts on your creativity i mean i'm not always my best friend my own best friend and so i i can be hard on myself not overly hard but i will entertain the critic um i was saying recently that what i've tried to do is to see exactly where the critic is coming from so i hear these words or you feel a particular way and just sit in it and say well why actually ask yourself the question well why do you feel this way why do you feel like you know after you've you you went on to pinterest <laughs> and you're feeling good about yourself and saw all these different things and then you came across a particular artist and you thought well what in heaven's name am i doing in the sense that you know well why bother why even and you've then started to compare so you can't be friends with yourself and be comparing yourself to somebody else because you're both on you're on different journeys to other people you're on a different journey now you may say yeah but they're artists as well and it's just like yes but you're still on a different journey with different experiences different um purposes and different different ways in which you are both going to impact on the world. You're not going to impact in the same way on the same person. There's going to be different people seeing your work. So you just have to get on with it and, and not allow fear to creep in and not allow doubt because they all go hand in hand with, um, can sometimes go hand in hand with the uh, critic. And so you have to really Sometimes you really have to push through because that's if I'm feeling off and sometimes it can be a trigger like, you know, you're on, <laughs> you're looking on Pinterest and you come across a particular work or you get an, a newsletter email from someone and for whatever reason you start feeling off. And I think that is when you, you started to compare because before you was fine and now you're sitting in this, oh, all I feel like doing is eating chocolate and um, watching whatever it is you want to watch on the TV, um, several series of it. So I think when you're feeling that way, when that comes, you have to, you have to, sometimes you just have to sit in it and just say, okay, all right, let me just, okay, it's like a cardigan. So let me i'm not going to put my arms all the way through i'm just going to sit here with it over my shoulders is it even the right way <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm going to sit with it over my shoulders and just see how i feel in it so you're sitting in this oh i feel this way and i feel off and oh so you're just sitting in it don't if you put, start putting your arms through, 
it's just like, oh, you start going down another road. Oh my gosh, I can never do this and I'll never do that. So just sit with it. Okay, this is how you feel. Why do you feel that way? So I'll say, well, why do I feel that way? Okay, so I came across this person's work. What is it about this person's work that triggered something in me, a particular emotion that makes me feel bad about myself, makes me feel that I haven't done nearly as much as I should? Um, and when you start breaking it down, you might come up with, oh, this is something that I've always wanted to learn, but I was never given the opportunity. But why not give myself the opportunity because I'm a grown woman? <laughs> so maybe I can, I can learn these techniques. I can learn this technique. And then it might back back and say, yeah, but, you know, um, like, you know, when you start out and it, I would never say any, anybody's art is rubbish, um, but you look at it critically. So what you might need to do is say, well, okay, if I practiced, I would get better. And then think about something that you have practiced and achieved the results that you wanted. So now you've got comparison. It's not just a, yes, but if you practice, you'll get better. You, you can say, okay, when I did this, I got better. So that's something that I did. I was, um, I wanted to be able to speak on any particular issue. That was one of the things that I was thinking about. Um, and I wanted to be inspiring and I wanted to create something. So I practiced and I practiced. I never, um, I never had any like preconceived ideas as to how long it should take or whatever, but it, I did it for about a year. And this was just, I was doing it for another, there was another motivation in that um, when I was doing it, I was either in my car driving to my mum's, which was, uh, say, 40 minutes door to door, or I was going to pick up my son, which is half an hour away when he was younger. And so it was just like, I wanted to do something in the car, and it was just literally recording myself. So I put the phone on the dashboard and just pressed record and then I started started talking and so that I did it for about a year year and a half and then I thought oh you know I thought oh you could perhaps use these recordings but because it was in the car you know you're not using any proper equipment and um, so you've got the background noises <laughs> and times where I'm just like what are you doing <laughs> well I wasn't like that in the car but it was just like oh my gosh what is he doing you know I'm not that kind of angry person in the car but when you see people when you see people doing silly things you just think really so you've got that in the background so it was just like okay so I can't use these recordings let me that was when I wanted to start doing podcasting but I thought um you know back then you had to pay to host the podcasting but now check out anchor.fm <laughs> check out my podcast and hi guys um <laughs> this is for the podcasters and sorry yeah i did make reference to my earrings and i did make reference to my cardi um but if you come onto the youtube channel you'll actually see um what they look like not that you need to but anyway so yeah you know how friendly are you with yourself how supportive are you with yourself and so you may need to, when you've identified, and you'll only identify it by sitting in it, and then for future you'll be able to say, okay, when I'm feeling off, it's usually because I've started to compare myself to somebody. So what I might need to do is learn a new skill. I might need to just go and sit down and read. I might need to take myself for a walk or to the beach or wherever it is, but to nurture yourself back to a place where you're um, feeling good about yourself. And I think it's important that you do that because you don't want you feeling good about yourself dependent on what somebody else does. You know, oh, well, you know, if somebody, if so-and-so came around and saw me, then I'd, you know, oh, I need to talk to so-and-so so they can lift up my spirits. No, you need to learn the techniques. You need to learn you, you need to know you and be your own best friend 
so that you're not reliant on other people and then if other people don't turn up you're not oh my gosh i'm feeling this way and this and then they didn't turn up and oh i must be a terrible person because <laughs> Oh dear, but um, yeah, and and be, you know, it's not it's not to say that you can't have be surrounded by loads of people, but when all said and done and they've all gone, you're only left with yourself. So it is about you loving yourself so much that um, that you're there to support yourself. And yes, you know, you can have. You know, surround yourself with people who are um, um, who are encouraging and supportive as well. But again, you know, you spend the most time with yourself. So, whatever, whenever you're with yourself, you know, be that friend, indeed. So, what else has been happening this week? I mean, we're we're here in a tropical environment. And we're going to be going into lockdown next week um, for two weeks. Like, you're not supposed to leave your house or your, you know, wherever you live. Um, we're blessed that, you know, we've got a garden back and front. And, I mean, I'm out there every day. And so, between the garden and my studio, that is my world in the sense that I find so much um, joy in those places, creating, and then I'm online, and then, you know, um, and I, I always spend time, I always spend time in the garden, in my green space, um, you know, enjoying, um, enjoying what I'm doing out there, and enjoying what I'm doing in the studio, so, that's going to be, you know, a really trying time for a lot of people because they've either been isolated or they're isolating themselves because of, you know, that's the health needs at the moment. And a lot of people are finding it difficult. A lot of people are finding the, what do they do? Because they haven't developed, um, this is like I'm having a conversation with myself. So <laughs> the train of thought was a lot of people are feeling stressed out because they haven't developed like activities for themselves. So that if they don't, where they would go out and work and they're not able to, what then would you do? So if you can find something that is, um, I was going to say productive, but is, so I think you need to have something that's like creative, that's a given. But find something that you can do where you can produce something, whether it's for yourself and your family, or whether it's like you're starting a, a hobby or something like that. But have something that you can create a schedule around if you're not able to work from home, or if you're, if you've, you know, been made redundant, or you know, you've, you've, if you don't have a job now. If you have certain routines that you can do and think about how you know these can grow then you'll stand a better chance than if you know work was your life and your life was work and um, you've been sent home you're furloughed where you you get what eight percent of your I don't know whether they, they don't have it here I don't know what the situation is here but a lot of people were already below the breadline, um, working in jobs where they were like they were working, say a forty-hour week for twenty hours pay. Um, there was one lady we um, was coming out of this uh, parking lot, and she was the ticket person, and she said, "Oh, you know, do you mind if I ask you a question?" So it was just like, "Yeah, go on then," and she was just like, "What would you do if?" your boss came to you and said you can either um, leave and not have a job or do the same hours for 50% pay cut, what would you do? 
And it was just like, oh my gosh. And that was her, her that was the situation she was in. She had, to, you know, and obviously it was just like, well, if you've got a job and you've got money coming in, then at least there's money coming in. It's 50% less than you would get. And you weren't getting, like, you weren't being highly paid and being able to, you know, you was living on the breadline and now you're way below the breadline and you, you're, um, if you're renting a home, your landlord's not coming to say to you, oh yeah, yeah, you can live in here same way and just pay me half. It's just like, you know, these bosses, it's just like, how can you do that to people? Um, how can you expect them to do the same work? You're not, you're, you know, the same work for half the pay. You're not doing that. You're getting your big fat bonuses and you're making your profits in your company. Um, people are going to lose their homes. You know, they're not able to feed their families and things like that. And so when you think about people who they were already living below the breadline and now with what's going on, they haven't got any money. Like it's recognised. So the, the Prime Minister gave a talk um, and um, about the situation. And, it, and it, it's, you know, she said, well, you know, we've got these care packages, which are going to be for the most vulnerable and the um, low income. And it, a lot of, you know, if hotels have closed and you haven't got a job and you were low income anyway, and now, um, but she was saying, you know, we, we know we may not get to everybody. And it's just like, but how, <laughs> how is that going to work? Um, and so one of the things I would say, bringing it back to creativity, um, like if you've got something like you've got a, a, a pot and whatever, say food you've managed to buy, go and buy some vegetables with some seeds in them, especially squash, they're easy to grow, squash, pumpkin, um, cucumbers, some of the peppers and things like that. Plant a few trees so that in five years or in a year, if you look at the pomegranate, I planted the pomegranate, just look a bit weird, doesn't it? I planted the pomegranate and got fruit the same year. So find things that you can plant and grow in your little space, in your space, whatever garden size you've got, or if it's just a pot, and you'll be able to at least provide some food for your family. You know, um, I was thinking of some squash, <laughs> some squash soup. Um, so I've got my creative, I my garden is my creative haven as well. So I I plant things like papaya. I've got some planting that I harvested. I've got some bananas now. I've got a little video that I did. The banana flower is just coming out. So that is exciting. I've got lots of herbs, moringa, and um, what else have I got? That I've got different varieties of papaya. And actually, I just remembered I've got to go and pick one to add to the evening meal. Um, I sometimes pick them green. Well, I pick them green. Um, the the ones that would normally ripen for some reason they've just stopped so i've just been you know picking them green and um using them but um when they start to because what i find is when you pick it green and you try and ripen it for some reason it doesn't ripen but when you um when it starts to ripen on the tree and you leave it as long as possible and then bring it in. It might still have green bits on it. So you put it in a dark, you know, paper bag and then leave it and then it will ripen up. But, um, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that is one of my favorite things to do. But um, what else, what else is happening with you? Huh? Leave a link in the comment right now. Leave a, no, not leave a link in the comment. Leave a comment. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you're doing right now. Um, so, yeah, just, you know, think about how you can move forward in your creative walk. 
and think about how you are treating yourself and are you your own best friend and do you um, mistreat yourself by not getting enough rest, not getting enough good food, um, thinking, I was going to say not thinking out of the box but if you're not getting a good, enough good food but you're spending money on stuff and it's not nourishing you then you need to buy a pot of some soil and get some seeds, yeah? So you can have that. Um, and, oh, the other thing that's easy to grow is moringa. Um, yeah, pomegranate's easy to grow, moringa's easy to grow. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm growing black sage, which I use in tea. Oh, do you know what's easy to grow? Broadleaf thyme. It's like, anywhere you put it, you don't even have to plant it. You just lay it down on the floor, wherever you decide to grow it. So that's what I've done in the garden. It's just like, okay, I need to fill up this area. Come on then, guys, just cut it all back, grab a whole bunch. So make it about this deep. Even, even then you don't need to, but depending on if you want to like, I'm trying to close up uh, spaces around the uh, garden. So just, I would just layer it this deep and they start growing. And it's just like, they've got very shallow roots, so they just find, they just find nourishment from wherever. So you've got to find that creative spark, that thing within you that, um, and shine your light and be your own best friend so that you know how to show other people how to treat you. If you're treating yourself good, then you wouldn't let somebody in to mistreat you. Yeah, so you've got to find how it is. And I'm not saying I'm there yet because I don't always um, look after myself and I have to remind myself and I have to sit down, as I said, sit down in it and think, oh, so why are you feeling, why are you feeling that way? You know, what happened? What is it that triggered that before you reach for the chocolate? I don't always succeed. It's just like that I've eaten half of it and then that I realize I've got chocolate in my hand. And it's just like, this was almost automatic or you've reached for something that's comforting. Um, and I want that comforting thing to be my art of creativity, making something like I've got, something that I really want to make and it's sitting on my desk. I want to make it with uh, the fabric. Um, I use the fabric uh, gauze, plaster of Paris gauze. And so there's some things that I want to do with it. Um, there was a lesson on, I'm one of the teachers on Lifebook 2021. So I think it was Tony Burt. She made these fabric bowls. Um, from these plaster of Paris and they're really quite cute. So I wanna get my hands on it and just get on with it. So check out um, some of the lessons and I'll leave all the links below. The um, Loving Healing Creating Summit, the Badass Art Journal, which starts next week, the first. Um, Creative Jumpstart, which we're on Friday we've got a, um, a meet up with the artists. So if you wanna hear me talk again, um, and some other artists, loads of, I think there's about nine, 10 of us that are gonna be on the call. So you can, um, you know, send in questions, I think, and just connect with us. And Lifebook, so Lifebook, Creative Jumpstart, Badass Art Journal, and, and Creative Healing, Loving, Healing, Creating Summit. So I look forward to having you join me and yeah, let's do this. Be good to yourself, be kind to yourself, love on yourself and um, just take that break if you need it. You know, give yourself permission. If you need a nap, <laughs> make sure you do it before six o'clock, six o'clock at, at night um, in the evening. So if you're gonna have a nap, have like a 10, 15 minutes, wake up refreshed, go out, have a walk, 
Um, if you want to watch something, give yourself permission. Don't do the three hours, maybe do an hour, half an hour, 20 minutes. Make sure that you're doing things that edify you. You know, read a book, um, learn a new skill, try using your supplies in a different way. And as I said, become the friend that you want in your life. And you'll see things just, you know, from a different perspective. So take care for now. I'll see you soon.